Once the preparatory step has been completed, we're ready to actually enter into the citric acid cycle, which can alternatively be called the Krebs cycle after Dr. Krebs, who discovered or, or kind of teased out this cycle. If you look here in this diagram on the left, we have the preparatory step that I described on the previous video right here. And so here we can see that the loss of carbon dioxide and the conversion of pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the molecule that actually enters into the um, citric acid cycle. The acetyl-CoA combines with a molecule called oxaloacetate. Now oxaloacetate is another one that I want you to know. So we're adding to our list of names of molecules that you need to know. Now oxaloacetate is a, is a four carbon structure. Okay, so it has four carbons. It's a sugar. All of these can be considered sugars. It's a four carbon structure. Acetyl-CoA, you're going to notice, is a two carbon structure. So when we combine four plus two, we're back to a six carbon structure. S glucose was a six carbon structure. Now we're back to a six carbon structure. And that six carbon structure is called citrate or citric acid. Now this diagram that you're looking at here is a simplified form okay of the citric acid cycle and I'll show you a more complicated and detailed form in a minute but I want you to kind of see this overview and get a good feel for it before we actually dig into the chemical reactions. Citric acid will be rearranged, it will be oxidized, reduced, etc. until ultimately we end up right back at oxaloacetate. During this process carbon dioxide is lost and the following molecules are created. We gain three NADH, one FADH2, one ATP. But once again, I need to remind you, in this diagram on the left, we're only showing the fate of one pyruvate, but we really have two of them, which means we really have two acetyl-CoA, which means we're really going to produce two citric acids, uh, two alpha-ketoglutyric acid, to oxaloacid, uh, oxaloacetate acid. I usually call that oxaloacetate because it rolls off the tongue a little easier. And so then of course each of these molecules would be times two as well. So never forget that part. All right. So we're going to look at the net total. Uh, one of the last pages that we have in this uh, lecture is a um, scorecard. And we're going to look at the scorecard and kind of add everything up. But just to add this up here, that gives us the 6 NADH from this citric acid process, plus its tag along hydrogen, 2 FADH2, and 2 ATP. We're still nowhere near the ATP yield that I talked about in the f one of the first slides. You're not seeing the 30 32 ATP yet, are you? And so um, that's a super important thing to kind of keep in mind that up until this point, we really haven't produced much in the way of ATP. And so this is going to be uh, important to look at and realize and understand that. Um, let's go ahead and look at the more detailed chemical reaction here and we can actually see the names of each of the difficult chemical processes. And at each step, step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, we have enzymes catalyzing these chemical reactions. They're not listed here. We're not giving you the names and you don't need to memorize them anyway. Okay? And in fact, you really don't need to memorize any of these steps, but I wanted to show you the detailed chemical reactions so you can see where each of the individual processes that we're most interested in take place. Don't fret too much about this. Don't don't kill yourself trying to memorize every step. It's, it's really okay not to. This is a physiology class, not a biochemistry class. Trust me, you'll, you'll end up learning this if you're going to go take biochemistry and you're going to hate it and you'll forget it as soon as you've memorized it because that's what everybody does. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at this really quickly. And so you can see our acetyl-CoA being added to the uh, oxaloacetate, okay? All right, so here's my oxaloacetate, or that really difficult mouthful, oxaloacetate.
oxaloacetic acid. Yikes. Um, and then here's our citric acid that we saw in the previous version here. And so we're going to need an enzyme that can do this chemical reaction, that can combine this chemical reaction. Now you'll recall that when I talked about, not that one, this one. I talked about coenzymes and how coenzymes are like enzymes in that they are not consumed. They are reused. But in this particular chemical reaction, this coenzyme attached to my carbon and stayed attached. And it's hard to imagine how are we going to reuse something that is chemically covalently attached to a carbon, kind of hard. But then if you look back down here at this reaction here, here's my CoA. So we hold on to it for a short time, just a short little while, and then it's set free. And it's allowed to go back into uh, the chemical reaction that converts more pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. And so that's an important thing to remember and realize that we are reusing that coenzyme frequently. As we continue through the cycle, I want you to look at step four really quickly. Again, don't worry about the names, but look here at my step four. This is the first step that we're going to use to produce my um, NADH, okay? And that NADH will shuttle off, will move off into the, um, to the electron transport chain. And so we'll look at that. Uh, of course, we've got the tag along hydrogen there. And so that actually means that this is an oxidation reduction reaction. NAD plus is being reduced to make NADH. And that means this isocitric acid is being oxidized to give us alpha keto -glut glutarate. Much easier to say than glutyric acid. Eh. Alpha keto glutarate. Um, and notice also in this process, and you're going to see a trend here, when we produce CO2, sorry, misspoke there. When we produce NADH, we also have a tendency to release carbon dioxide, okay? And you can see it again here in this next reaction, in reaction five, I'm going to form another NADH molecule and I'm going to release another carbon dioxide molecule. In step five, I'm also going to be creating ATP. Now from this chemical reaction, you can actually see it's not a direct conversion. We first make an intermediate called GTP, GTP, and from that we get our ATP, okay? And then we're going to our next reaction and we're going to produce our FADH2. Once again, this is an oxidation reduction reaction. FAD is being oxidized into FADH2, and that means, correction, FAD is being reduced to produce FADH2, and that means succinic acid is being oxidized to produce fumaric. How do I know FADH2 is being reduced? Well, <laughs> those hydrogens are a giveaway. Okay. Remember that hydrogens follow the electrons, and so if we see something gaining hydrogens, it's a really good bet that we're dealing with an oxidation reduction reaction there. Okay. And then we're going to go on, and then when in step eight, we're going to produce another NADH2, this time without the carbon dioxide. Let me do a quick scan here and make sure we have everything we need, and that's essentially the nuts and bolts of it. Again, please don't spend your time memorizing this, but also recognize this is going to spin twice. That actually means we get two of everything. Here I simply outline what I want you to know, what I don't want you to know. Again, we're going to add to your list. You need to know acetyl-CoA, you need to know citric acid, you need to know oxaloacetate or oxaloacetic acid. Um, and that's what you're essentially going to want to know. Let's do a quick, before we get into the electron um, transport chain, we're going to do kind of a tally of what we have so far. And so first off, let's look at glycolysis. And we're going to assume that we have plenty of oxygen here. So there's no gl um, oxygen jet. Glycolysis. And so let's just make a list of what happens in glycolysis. First, we invest ATP. So I'm going to say that costs us two 
ATP. Let me try to write that in a normal human way because we usually don't write it that way. I just brain thinking too fast and mouth and hand all not cooperating together. It happens as you... Oy. Anyway, all right, 2 ATP, so it costs 2 ATP. But then we're going to gain back 4 ATP and we also gain two of my NADH with its tag along hydrogens, hydrogen. So that's my glycolysis. Now let's look at what I like to call the preparatory step. This is where we're going to convert pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. So I'm going to call it the prep step. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm not too hung up on names in this case. And during the preparatory step, we're going to take my pyruvate and convert it into acetyl-CoA. And in the process, I'm going to produce two carbon dioxide. Now, that's not really an energy molecule, but I still want you to keep track of it because I want you to keep track of the carbons. Right? So we don't use carbon dioxide for energy, but still keep track of it. Two carbon dioxides, plus we're also going to get another two NADH plus hydrogens. Now you're noticing, I hope, that I am doing this without looking at my notes, which means I expect you to be able to do this without looking at your notes. Okay, so um, you, this, this is the take home, gee whiz, so what, why do I care, because these are my energy molecules that I need to track and my carbon. Now let's look at the citric acid cycle. Okay. During my citric acid cycle, I'm going to take that acetyl-CoA, and from that, I'm going to produce, uh, let's think about this for a second, a total of 6 NADH plus my hydrogens, 2 FADH2s, and 4 carbon dioxides, and then we also need to add in my two ATP. Now maybe you're going, wait a second, what? I thought we just only made three NADH. Let's go back here and look. I have count one, two, three, only three. What's going on, Dr. Borup? Are you crazy? Of course not. Remember, everything's times two. Okay? Everything's times two. All right, so that's what you got to look at. That's what you got to see. And you need to know this. And so we can do some quick math. Um, so we can go, let's see, I've got 2 ATP there and 2 ATP there. So I've got all total, if we add all of these up together, so far what my yield is, is 4 ATP. Yay! That's not going to keep your muscles working for very long. Not at all. And then we're going to have 2, 4, 6, so I have 10 NADH molecules plus their hydrogens. I'm going to have two FADH molecules, DH2s, and then I'm going to have, do to do these will be my energy molecules, and then I'm going to add over here on my side here that I have a total of six carbon dioxides. Whoa, now that should be cool. Six carbon dioxides. How many carbons do I have in glucose? Six. Ultimately, the fate of every carbon that is in glucose will be to be exhaled from your body. Okay, ultimately. That's the, that's, that's what happens. So the faster we do cellular respiration, or more precisely, the faster we do the citric acid cycle, including the preparatory step, the faster we produce carbon dioxide. And as carbon dioxide builds up in the bloodstream, it has this uh, ability to combine with water to produce acid. And so cellular respiration will actually cause our blood to become acidic and homeostasis will be disrupted and so we need to compensate for that and so to compensate that for that we're going to breathe harder and faster to get rid of the carbon dioxide we'll have a chance to go through all of that again in more detail but i want you i'm trying to train you to think about everything in terms of homeostasis and how everything is interconnected Okay, everything is interconnected. Carbon dioxide affects blood pH. Blood pH affects the respiratory system and the renal system and enzymes and so forth.
And so everything is interconnected. And so you, you should always remember that. Okay. With that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into... Uh, what am I doing? Oh, we're going to pause. We'll go into the citric acid cycle in just a moment. Yikes. You can tell my brain is not firing on all four cylinders. Or maybe I like to think of mine as a V8. But anyway, I'm only using four cylinders right now. Or three cylinders. Or maybe only two. So let me try that again. We're going to move into the electron transport chain. We're going to talk about the electron transport chain. We just finished talking about the citric acid cycle. 